Is the microphone hot? There it is. Hello, Fan Expo 2015. How are you? Nice to see you. I'm AJ Fry. I host a show on Space Channel called Inner Space. You can catch it weeknights at 6 and 11 if you're here in the Eastern Standard Time Zone. Uh, so this is obviously going to be an awesome panel. We've got our guests backstage. We're going to bring them out in a sec. But just a, a little Q&A for you or, or some Q&A instructions. Uh, this is about listening to our guest and, and hearing him talk. So good questions are things like, what was it like working with person X? Or tell us about your time working on project X. Not, can I have a hug? Or, um, how much money do you have? Think about good <laughs> questions, not bad questions. And with all that said, you know him, you love him, it's Jason Momoa, everybody! <laughs> so, I'm going to ask a few questions off the top, things that are probably on everyone's mind. And then we'll go to the floor. There are two people with microphones waiting for questions, I believe. So to start, I of course need to ask you, what can you say about Aquaman, about Justice League, about Batman v Superman? I know you're not allowed to say much, so... It's gonna be amazing. <laughs> Well, I can say I'm um, extremely honored and excited, as, as much as maybe some of you are. Uh, it's a dream come true to, to be doing something like that, and uh, being a father, you know, I'm gonna be really cool for a little bit. <laughs> uh, my children normally don't get to see a lot of the things that I'm on. But they're still eight and six, and uh, we don't talk about you know, too many things that Papa does. Right. But um, I'm pretty happy to be Aquaman and showing my children for, you know, another... I mean, I'm going to be doing it for a while, so... Now, uh, I mean, there's many ways that you can take the character. Obviously, you don't look like the traditional, classic look of Aquaman. And I wanted to ask you, you're known for playing these really tough, gruff characters, but I've interviewed you before, and you are like the chillest, most calm, nice, actor that I've, that I've met. You're just, you've got this chill energy about you. How do you approach these tough guy characters? Savage if it's, roles. Yeah, these <laughs> savage roles if it's not in your nature. Yeah, I think it's just my forehead. I think <laughs> most people get me confused for being angry. <clears throat> and I don't smile. I, I, yeah, I normally smile a lot more often. So, I don't know. I'm just, uh, I make a good mean face. <laughs> people like that. So... It's working. I don't know. Um, but I think uh, the reason why I'll be... There's, there's a lot of reasons why Zach... Um, you know, he had this idea of me playing Aquaman. And I'm um, pretty excited to step in those shoes. Well, is he going to be a bit of a, a chill character? Because, I mean, Batman and Superman, at least in, in these recent films, they're, they're very serious characters, very, you know, gruff. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know yet. Okay. You can't see me uh, busting out a bunch of jokes, and uh, I mean, I don't think it'll be like that, so... Um. Okay. I'll stop asking, I'll stop asking. Yeah. But I will ask you, before we go to the floor, about uh, Road to Paloma, the film that you wrote and directed last year. Can you tell the audience about it, if they're, they're not familiar? Yeah. Um, I guess for those people who haven't seen Road to Paloma, I, uh, we spent about... Me and my friends, uh, you know, I co-wrote it with a buddy, and then my, my friend Brian shot it, and... It's a story about um, this man saying goodbye to his life. It's so weird with the echo. I'm just like, is that what I sound like? <laughs> if you haven't seen it, please check it out. It's, it's basically, uh, it deals with some issues that are happening, probably in Canada and, well, definitely the United States. And it, it's revolved around the rapes on Native American reservations. But it's a, it's a huge injustice that I tried to shed some light on. And, uh... It's important to, to do that, so. And you know, I'm on a motorcycle, and uh, that there's fun stuff too. And I beat people up, so you'll like it too. <laughs> I make this face too, and, and I smile. 
It's probably the closest to who I am that I've ever played. Cool. You know, I'm not very, I'm not like Drogo. <laughs> I hope not. No, no. I like when my woman, woman doesn't cry when I... <laughs> That's always a <laughs> sign of a healthy relationship. <laughs> so... All right, let's go to the floor for some questions. No raping and pillaging these days. I'm married with children now. <laughs> right down here in the center aisle. Oh, hi, Jason. Uh, big fan of yours. Uh, That's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> big fan of yours, Jason. Uh, I was wondering, just for all the DC fans in the house, can you just settle, what would be your reply to any of the Aquaman-related fish jokes that anyone has for you? Uh, I, you know... It, it, it's cute and funny. I mean, people, you know, they make fun of them and they, there's a bunch of jokes about them, but I'm just like, well, oh, just wait. <laughs> we'll just, we'll just, let's just wait a little bit. <laughs> and then we can make jokes. <laughs> All right, we'll stay down the center aisle. If you uh, do have questions for Jason, you can line up. Hello. So, Emilia Clark did talk about, you know, the fluffy pink sock incident that happened on set. Can the you tell fluffy, us fluffy big pink sock. <laughs> Attitude. You don't want to knock anyone's attitude out. Can you tell us what went through your head to go like, instead of a modesty sock, I'm just going to put this on my junk and it's going to be great. <laughs> Did it feel great? <laughs> it's a fluffy pink sock. What went through your mind for you to decide to do that? Oh, what made my mind? There's a lot of reasons. You're going to stick around and watch what my mind does. I'm uh, There's a lot of people in there talking that do stupid things, so... Um, I just, I, if I'm really uncomfortable, I'm a big fan of laughing. That helps, you know, when you're naked around, you know, a whole crew of people in the middle of January. <laughs> and, and Belfast, Ireland. You know, it's cold. It's not that cold, but, you know, fucking pink sock brings a little levity to the situation, so. <clears throat> and I enjoy laughing and I like making her laugh, so. Thank you for the question. Oh, look at this guy. Greetings, Your Highness. You look amazing. I'm, thank you. I'm Kareem of the Atlantean Guard. And it is an honor to be in your kingly audience. My king, I beseech you. Send a message to this planet. For too long have these surface dwellers poisoned our shared air, our shared water, with their toxic and dexterous ways. My king, how swift shall our justice be? What is your decree? How shall we respond to the inhumanity? Thank you. Kill them all. got me beat there, buddy. <laughs> Let's talk in a couple of years. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Hi. How does one follow that? I know. I mean, really, you guys all just witnessed the uh, coolest moment ever. That's, that's awesome, buddy. I hope you, by the way, I'm going to do my damnedest. Okay? <laughs> um... There's all this hype about Batman versus Superman right now. <laughs> Who would Aquaman end up in a feud with, do you think? Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> or I know, and I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Alright, thank you. Who's next? Who do you think should sit on the Iron Throne? Oh. <laughs> My lady. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Danny should be on the throne and you put the the um the imp right there. Advisor <laughs> and someone else I'd like to say, but I'm just gonna let it play out. But he'll be right there. A couple dragons behind him. <laughs> Alright, hello. Hi there, my name is Eliza. It's good to meet you. Um, I have a very um, 
Well, it's not a weird question, but on the set of Game of Thrones, were there any really distinct pranks that were pulled that like just made you cackle? Any, any, any pranks that uh, were particularly <laughs> hilarious? I mean, we're in a... Beyond the pink song. song. On, your, on your PP is pretty <laughs> Do I have to beat that one? I mean, that's a pretty good prank. Uh, I don't remember too many more. Um, geez, Louise. Um, I did a lot of pranks, mostly on Stargate Atlantis. I think it takes a couple of years to like really break into your friendship level to like shit in someone's pot and turn the heater on and shut the water off. And, like, you know, really torture someone. It takes a little bit more than one season. But if I was still there, those fuckers would be in trouble. <laughs> great question. Hello. Hi, Jason. You seem to have really a, a great camaraderie on the set of Stargate Atlantis. Um, as you probably know on Space Channel, they have a great new series called Dark Matter, uh, written by Justin Mullows and Paul Mooley, and Tori Higginson and David Hewlett both kind of guest starred in the first season. Um, has there been any talk to any other cast members, of, past cast members of Atlantis? Would you uh, be approached? And if you were, what would you think about joining uh, for a guest spot? On the show? On that show? On Dark I, haven't, I haven't seen that show yet. Um, I'm sorry, but... Uh... I don't watch my own show, so... Um, yeah, I'm open to all that. Absolutely. Um, love Tori, love... I mean, Paul, all, everyone that was on my cast, I love. Except for David Hewlett. <laughs> you guys already knew that. We did Unite to make a, a movie here that we shot in Toronto, which was pretty cool. I was back in a media directed film called Debug, so... Um, we were... You know, I stay in contact with pretty much everyone, so... But I'm open to working with my friends and family. Thanks for the Dark Matter plug. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I've been watching your Pride of Gypsies take on a more creative projects, larger variety. And I'm wondering if you have a dream goal in mind or kind of a career trajectory for your community, Pride of Gypsies. Uh, for my company, yeah, I have a small group of ragtag degenerates that uh, are artists and you know I want to be able to uh, I'm gonna be doing these superhero movies for quite a while and then there's these movies that I really want to there's things that I want to say as an artist and uh, so we've made those movies and then also to be able to uh, like for instance we just did these car park commercials this, the company right here um, the new one just came out this for the winter spot just came out in the states I'm not sure if it's out here yet but um I went up to all my favorite companies and the people that I really respected and, and uh, asked if I could do their commercials and I just wanted to keep doing art and, and, and moving people and if I can do it on a commercial level and make you cry in 30 seconds to a minute, then great. If I can do it in a, you know, there's a lot of stories that I want to tell, so. Um, and one of them being this story in Hawaii, and it's a period piece, but it's stuff that we've been talking about for a while. It's called Enemy in the Valley, but that will go, it's a finished script, but it'll go after Justice League. That's when I'll direct that, so. But we just wrote another one that Pride of Gypsy is producing, and um, I'm gonna be shooting in Canada, I'm gonna be in Newfoundland. Uh, I'm gonna be in Newfoundland for a while, it looks like. I got some, there's some other cool stuff happening in the works right now. I don't wanna really curse it, but um, there's some, there's a new, there's so many things. And I'll be in Canada. So watch out. Have you been to Newfoundland before? I haven't. I'm pretty excited to go there. It looks pretty raw. Yeah. I've heard good things. I've been to the East Coast, but not Newfoundland yet. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm extremely pumped to go, so. Cool. I had a, I worked in Vancouver, obviously, for four years, and then I did two movies in Toronto, and I absolutely, I love Canada. It's great. Good people, and I mean, Toronto, thank you. <laughs> Toronto's amazing. I did not expect it to be as, as um, just, well, the people are phenomenal, and uh, the food is absolutely epic, and so, had a great time, you guys are awesome, thank you. Alright, we'll go back to the aisle, another question. At Choma, Choma Kal, Kal Vesbent.
Awesome. <laughs> Sorry, I just always wanted to say that. Uh, my question is... You did it, bro. <laughs> what is your personal opinion on filming Game of Thrones? What was it like, really? Uh, to date, it's definitely the greatest thing I've ever done as an actor. Um, like the hardest character to play, and is probably the the um, it's hands down the most artistic, beautiful piece of work in the crew and the cast. And the first season was really, really amazing. So um, it's definitely just the, the greatest experience I've had, pretty much in my acting career. Um, directing Paloma was probably one of them, but doing. Um, Game of Thrones before anyone really like it, before it really hit. I think it would be really challenging now, but and and harder because you don't get to actually like I got to spend a lot of time with Kit and Richard and um, just a lot of the cast members. Rory, we were all there at once, and we just shot episodes, not like block. We didn't block shoot everything. So now some cast members don't even cross over. But I was there the longest. So I got to really hang out and become a family with everyone. So um, I'm really glad I got to experience that. Did they you all remember me? <laughs> I was the only American. It's me and Peter English. You know what I mean? I don't remember Pete. Get out of here. Yeah, yeah come here, Pete. Yeah, you know, everybody. Did you anticipate it becoming the global phenomenon that it is when you took the job, or were you thinking, "Oh, this is just going to be like a, a really fun, awesome"? You know, I knew it was going to be huge. I mean, yeah. HBO put everything into it, and I mean, it's HBO. I just wanted to be in the room to audition to do HBO. Let alone get that. I mean, that's it's the role of a lifetime. I don't, I'll never play a role that'll ever be that have that big of an impact. I don't think it's it's it's, it's going to be tough to beat. Sounds like Aquaman might be pretty cool. It is. I just think over the course of all those movies, like just playing, you know, I was truly probably only in six episodes. You know, I mean, like the first two episodes, I don't say anything. <laughs> the last three, I'm dead. I'm basically I'm fucking dying. I had to die like three different ways. And if you rip your heart out. That's how amazing I am. Uh, I got a funny story about that. Um, well, I never had, had died. I mean, now I die and everything, but um, at, that, at that moment, I hadn't died and anything yet. And I was like, oh, baby, what you, I was talking to my wife, and I'm like, what, what do you think of this face? Like, you know, like, I'm dead, I can't really look at myself. And I'm like, does it look like I'm dead? She's like, don't do that face. I'm like, fuck you, I'm feeling it. I feel like I'm dead. I'm not, I feel like this is what I would look like. And she's like, don't do that. I'm like, fuck you, I'm doing it. So I did it, and she's like, that was good. I was like, yeah, I told you. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Not really. Um, but yeah, I had to obviously, you know, slip into a coma and then be in a coma and then die with a pillow. And yeah, it's it funny. So, I, you know, there's only like six, five or six episodes where you I really got to, you know, come off one way and turn it around and make you fall in love with me. Like make you hate me and then, you know, Make you love me. And then make you cry. Thank you very much for the question. Hi, Jason. Um, going back a couple years now. Hi, Captain Badass. <laughs> it's the Army. Um, I'm a big fan of Barry Windsor Smith Conan. Um, he was the best artist, I think, of it. Your portrayal of Conan was much more of a Barry Windsor Smithish uh, Conan, but knowing that you were coming in the shoes, or you were following the shoes of Arnold Schwarzenegger, what kind of trepidation, nervousness did you have going into that role? I didn't have any. Um, <clears throat> me and Arnold aren't. We don't have anything in common. So it's two completely different versions. And I feel like I was a huge Robert E. Power fan and I'm a huge Frank Frazetta fan. Those are, that's where I got my Conan. I love the dark, you know, the um, Dark Horse comics and stuff like that too, but I, I, I felt that Arnold didn't really capture what Frank Frazetta or, or Robert E. Howard truly was, you know what I mean? They definitely made it fit that piece, you know, to be like this bodybuilder size. He looks great, he looks amazing. I'm not a bodybuilder, I'm an actor. He was a bodybuilder. He was, you know, amazing. Um, he, he's a 
national treasure in, in some ways. He's just a very you know, there's no one that's going to be like Arnold or Stallone, you know what I mean? You can't come close to him, but um, I wasn't really trying to do that. You know, I was trying to really do what I think Robert E. Howard and um, when I saw Frazetta's paintings, I wanted to pull that off. So um, I never really went in because I, there's no way I can, can ever compare, compare to him. So I didn't really have that. And then a lot of people got mad because I never watched Conan, but it came out when I was like three, and I was married, or I mean, I was raised by a single mother in Iowa, and we weren't watching a lot of like rapes and people getting their heads cut off. And then when I got out of, out of you know, left the house, I wasn't like, I gotta go back and watch Conan, you know what I mean? I was like, see that woman over there? I'm gonna go make out with her. Then beer and women hit, so I was like, I'm not gonna really go watch Conan right now. And then when I got it, I was like, I should probably watch Conan. But then I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna go shoot Conan the way I want to, because I don't want to be, I did all the research, what I thought was important. And then afterwards, yeah, Lionsgate's like, yeah, you should probably go watch it, because it's, you know. And then I did, and I'm, we are just two, it's just two different things, so. Hold it up. Ignorance is bliss. <laughs> Great question, great answer. But you got two good Conans, right, buddy? Yeah. Two told everyone. All right. All right, buddy. Hey there. Hi, Jason. Nice to have you here. I <laughs> uh, just wanted to say I'm a great. Uh, I have a great love for Hawaii. I feel so at home there. Um, they actually ask us for a Koma Aina Prize when we're there. <laughs> Um, and my dream is to surf the pipeline someday. I'd love to do that. <laughs> yeah, me too, um, buddy. <laughs> Uh, I also went to the Turtle Bay Resort and, uh, you know, kind of reminisce. One of my favorite shows back in the day was North Shore. I really loved that show. <laughs> and I, I did, I loved it. It ended at such a great cliffhanger, right? And I don't know, I mean, people say low rating, stuff like that. But what's your take on why that show was canceled? How do you diplomatically answer that question? Well, I just think maybe there wasn't enough people interested in it. Um, I'm not sure why. Um, maybe it's because I needed to go to Stargate. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Um, I, I, yeah, I'm not really sure why, because I think the OC was out, and that did really well, and then they tried to do it in Hawaii, and it just... Maybe I just jinxed it. I apologize, bro. <laughs> I mean, fuck, dude, I gotta play a bartender. I mean... <laughs> That was an amazing role. I had to research that one really hard. <laughs> Frankie kind of stuck with me a little bit. You always great advice, though. You always give great advice. It's like cheers, bro. <laughs> but thanks for your question. Hi, Jason. Hi, uh, Great. It's great that you're here. Um, I have a quick question. I know you're from Hawaii, so I just wanted to know how many islands you've been to and which is your favorite island. Kauai is my favorite island. Um, I was born on Oahu, but I've been to Big Island and Maui too. I've never been to the, uh, the remaining islands. I've only been to four. Yeah, I'd love to see all of them soon, but yeah, thanks. Thank you. Hello. Hi, Jason. Hi. Um, so as a big Aquaman fan, I've always, like, I know that Aquaman's hair color has always been important to the comics. So is your hair kind of turned blonde at one point or? <laughs> Are you planning on dying or wearing a wig for the movies? <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna have to <laughs> Thank you. Hi. All the um, disappointment I'm just giving out. <laughs> uh, so my question is Stargate Atlantis related. Um, obviously Ronan gets into quite a lot of fights on the show. I was wondering if there was ever any accidents that you got into. Yeah, well I worked with a lot of people that didn't know how to do that, like Chris Judge and Rachel. Um, they're just kind of pretty faces. And uh, they're not very, it looks like they know how to fight, but they don't. And uh, yeah, those people hit me all the time. There was definitely a lot of accidents. I got popped by a couple people. Uh, Rachel definitely punched me in the eye. It's pretty good. It's in one of these episodes where we're like eating some kind of thing where it makes us all cracked out. I don't know. It was like lettuce, but it was on crack lettuce, you know what I mean? Space, you know, that kind of lettuce, right? Um, anyways, I like steal her food and she like give it back and I'm like, 
eating it like I don't know, fuck you. <laughs> she goes, she just hauls off and punches me, and they use the take where she's supposed to hit me in the chin, and I turn my head like this, and I'm like, you fucking hate me, and I turn back to her, and I'm like, you can see the red right here on my eye. And I'm just like, ah, and they use it. But I, I kept my face a turn for a while. I'm like, you fucking hit me. And I look at her, and you just like, Ooh. you can see like the red kind of swelling up. So then all the goddamn grips, they like send flowers, like, oh, we're sorry. And I'm like, I'm so vicious. Like they're like rubbing it in, like I hit like hit by a girl. I'm like, is my eye okay? I'm like, Ugh. that was a great question. Hello. Hi, tall boy. Uh, I was wondering if we could role play the um, the scene between Daenerys and Drogo on their sort of honeymoon. Uh, I know. Remember just what I was words, talking about just earlier? Words, just okay. words. Words. Uh, you just have to say one word three times. Do you remember that word? No. No. <laughs> no. That's a trick question. All right. Are we Are we ready? Okay, I'll begin. <laughs> no. Do you speak the common tongue? No. Is no the only word you know? No. Okay, thank you. Yeah, try doing that for an audition piece and see if you book it. <laughs> Good job, me. <laughs> What's that like, though? I mean, I was backstage uh, with uh, one of the hosts who was up here doing the last panel with Mads Mikkelsen, and she was saying, oh, you're talking to Jason Momoa. Can you touch his butt for me? <laughs> I said, I don't think so. But what's that reaction like, you know, becoming the sex symbol that, that women are constantly fawning over? I have no idea what it's like. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. It's weird. I don't know. Okay. I just kind of go, uh, oh, you really? I'm like, eh, thanks. Uh, you don't really know what to do with it. But thank you. <laughs> All right, we'll go back to the floor. Hello. Um, I wanted to ask the backstory of your tattoo. It's really cool, and I wanted to know why you got it. That is uh, the Amakul. It's a guardian for uh, my family. It's a shark. It's actually funny, yeah, you know. Aquaman <laughs> shark. Um, anyways, but, you know, Snyder wanted to take this design and put it all over the whole body, which I thought was amazing. So, um, but it's, it's, it's to bring the darkness out of your heart and bring the light in, too. So it's face that way. It's the way we shake our hands. Um, also has, I got it before my son, so we had the name picked out. And it's kind of like little wolf fangs, too. Yeah. Very cool. Hello. Hi Jason, um, my question is, since being in Canada for as much as you have been, what is your favorite food that's Canadian? Like poutine or what? Canadian bacon? Yeah. And Hawaiian pineapple? You've got Hawaiian pizza! Which makes no fucking sense. I hate that and all the Hawaiians hate it. It's like, we don't even really eat that much pineapple. Why the fuck does it have Canadian bacon on top of it? So it should be a Canadian pizza with pineapple. <laughs> Hello. Who the hell can run in this country? <laughs> a lot of us wonder that, yeah. <laughs> Aren't you? Oh, who are you? Is this Deadpool? Uh, yeah, actually. Thanks. <laughs> um, hey, Jason. Um, I just want to say it's kind of weird to see you like smile and speak English. <laughs> and um, you play like one of the most badass characters on Game of Thrones. What did it feel like to get your ass handed to you by an infection? Well, it's a lesson to all you men trust no bitch. I like them apples. And it wasn't an infection, it was a fucking pillow that killed me. <laughs> By a bitch. It's a new definition of pillow talk. <laughs> me and Deadpool are gonna have some words later. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. I'm like, Rodent 
Conan Drogo and on the mango kick your ass. <laughs> the only kid here, but who is your favorite superhero? It was Dead Cool, but... <laughs> She's a kid. And, uh, um, you know what, I'm gonna have to go with, and it's... Um, I just, I mean, Batman, I hate, you know, I grew up, I mean, when that was coming out, I was like at the prime age when, you know, Michael Keaton came out, I was just like, the whole Tim Burton thing, I was just like, oh my god, it's amazing, so, sorry, it's kind of cliche, but Batman was, was probably one of my favorites. That's your question. Why am I playing him? Oh, uh, I gotta put food on the table, kid. You like to eat? You like fish? It's all about food, bro. Survival. I have two children, too. And I'm not just randomly picking the jobs I want you to play, okay? I'll talk to your parents later. Your turn. How you doing, brother? What's going on? All right, those two. I want you to be a little better with your questions. <laughs> well, you're gonna be fucking disappointed. <laughs> All right, back to Vancouver. <laughs> so I got a couple for you. So uh, uh, you only get one, asshole. <laughs> There's other people, and it's not just about you, okay, sweetheart? It's about fucking me. This is about you, baby. This is about you. This is... What part... This is my day! <laughs> this is my panel! Go to the back! Next question! What do you want? What role did you read for that you never got? And what... Uh, what, uh... What the? Uh, what the? Uh, what other? Uh, See, even yourself is saying you only get one question. So why don't you want to let me just answer let, this? Let, let, I'll let you answer this one first, and then I'll give you the. I read for a role in Magnificent Seven. That was oh, yeah. hands down the best role in the whole movie, and uh, got very close. It didn't work out, but um, it's the only one that's ever gotten away that I was like, oof, I really wanted that one. Which role? Did you think you could play better than the actual actor that played it? I'm not petty like that right now. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I, 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 don't, uh, I don't really get into that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? I think everyone who has gotten a role maybe that I didn't get is done terrific, you know what I mean? They're better for that role. A lot of the times it comes down to a look, you know what I mean? If you want an ape, you're gonna hire me. And uh, if you want like a white guy that is not like me, then that's he's better for the role. You know? like, just different strokes for different folks, man. Thanks very much. Well, let's stay on that vein with a question. Is there a character that exists, you know, in entertainment that, that, that people would know of or that, that you know of that you think people should know of that you would like to bring to life if uh, given the opportunity? What do you mean by that? Well, is there, you know, a character like James Bond, or is there something that you would like to do in your career oh, that you yeah, have not like done? Oh, yeah, would like to play James Bond? I mean, like, that not necessarily kind of James Bond, but any character. Um, yeah, but I mean, I, yeah, like, I'm, we're writing it, it's called Allow, I'm playing my dream character, yeah. So, I mean, we wrote it, and it's a dream role, and... Well, there you go. Yeah. Thanks, Paul. That's the floor. Uh, hey, Jason. I just want to say I was really excited to hear when you got the part of Aquaman and really uh, interested to see uh, your take on the character. My question is, uh, are we going to see, uh, are you planning on bringing anything from your past roles into this one? I 
I mean, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think, uh, you know, I don't think Aquaman's gonna be raping and pillaging any little bees. <laughs> Like, I'm, I'm, are we going to be scared of your Aquaman, is my question. I mean, I like bringing a level of, like, I like bringing a lot of different colors to a character. You know I mean? It's not just, I think, you know, maybe if you've seen a bullet to the head, there's like a, I don't like to just play like a bad guy, and I didn't, I didn't play Drogo as a bad guy. So I like to put many different, you know, colors and flavors in, in it. So, um, yeah, I think there'll probably be something that I may put in there that you might see from something else, but um, generally speaking, I try to make them very complex characters. So. Thank you. Hello. Greetings, welcome back to Toronto, Jason. Hi. Hey. <laughs> I'm curious, I'm sure at the end of a long day of pretending to rape and pillage and beat up people that sometimes you wander on home and you're possibly wearing some of the costume. What's the reaction like when you go home? Do the children cower in terror or do they say, Daddy, why don't you look like that all the time? Yeah, you know, when I ripped that guy's throat out in there, you know, my daughter was just like sitting on set, like just um, knitting. And come, you know, and she was with the, the wardrobe people and she'd come on set with me and I'd be like, hey baby, I love you. And she's like, oh well, Papa, you're so chilly. And so like, yeah, and I, Shilly Papa, I'm like, yeah, I'm a Shilly Papa, you know what I mean? Like, and so they sit around with me. The only time we kind of freaked them out was when I did Wolves. When I was here, they showed up and I was like five hours of makeup, putting on a wolf suit. And I'm like, <laughs> the teeth in and everything, and I was just the eyes, and I'm like, hey kids. And it's like, <laughs> Papa? And I'm like, hey, <laughs> I'm a wolf. And they're just like, grab mom's leg. Papa? So, they're cool with it, um, but you know what's funny is actually when, I, when we shot Game of Thrones, I couldn't grow a beard, like cause I got hired, there's no way I could grow a beard that long that quick, um, Hawaiians aren't that hairy. Um, but, uh, so they made me shave all this part off and then they would just um, glue all this on, you know, and I kept a mustache. I had this 70s porn mustache. <laughs> Six, five, running around Belfast, which is pretty much white. Um, it is white. And, uh, I, you know, it's a bitch to get mascara out. <laughs> I know the guys don't know here, but uh, you ladies, if you put a bunch of black mascara around your eyes, it's, I'm not, I don't have time to sit there and put all that shit on and take it off either. You know what I mean? So I'm just, I wipe it off, go to bed. Go to the bar first, then go to bed. So I go to the bar, and you know, for a whole season, people are just like, there's the big drag queen. <laughs> they didn't know anything about Game of Thrones. You know? I mean, they were just like, he's cool. I mean, he's not harmless. Just have my mascara on and my mustache and long hair. And uh, you know, when I went back the second season, they were just like, hey, you know, they, they loved, you know, it was just a total different vibe. <laughs> That's why you look that way. <laughs> Great question. So you're up next. Hi, Jason. My name's Chris, and I had a quick question. When did you first learn the haka, and what does that mean to you? Uh, I first learned the haka when I was little. I mean, uh, my dad, uh, he, I've been to many events where, you know, in little events where that had happened. Um, really, when it connected to me, my, uh, my cousin passed away, and all his best friends, he, he was a football player, and all his best friends that were doing it while we were, you know, taking the casket and putting, lowering him down. And uh, i never seen grown men, like, put out so much energy and love and, like, hurt and, like, tears I could see squirting out of their eyes. And just the, the power that you can bring. And uh, I've done it before, and, you know, it's really designed to you know, me and you were gonna go into battle, and you know, please no. <laughs> some guys are more equipped for other things, and uh, we're all equal for different situations. <laughs> but the hawk is designed to bring us all as one, and bring it all up to a level of like you're basically calling down your ancestors, and you're grounding yourself, and you're getting ready for battle. Um, 
So that's how I learned it. But I, I just I wanted to try it out in game in the, in the audition just because I, I almost wasn't going to do it because I you don't really practice it. And, and uh, I did that first. I was like, hey, I have this great idea. You know, he doesn't speak English. I have to do the scene going, no, no, no. I mean, like, it's not an easy scene to do. And I wanted to impress him. This is what he would be like if he went into battle. This is what I would be like if I went into war. I want you to see what I can do and see what I can pull out of, you know, of myself. And so I did that. And they're like, oh, yeah, let's try it. And so I start doing it. And, uh, you know, they're basically shit themselves. <laughs> and uh, afterwards, I mean, I'm literally like, kill, 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 you know, my heart's just going, and I had to do that love scene. I'm just like, I can't breathe, because obviously I didn't practice it first, and, and then do the scene, so. Um, anyways, it just kind of worked and stuck with everyone, but I took a chance, and it's just about kind of doing that sometimes, so. Thanks for the question. Hello. I was just wondering, how much of your heritage do you, do you draw on, on your roles that you do? Um, as being an indigenous person from North America, I was just wondering which... All the time. Yeah. All the time. I think that's one of the things that I can offer the most. You know what I mean? I, I pull from both sides, you know what I mean? But um, having that uh, native blood and going from my people and my mom's side as a native, and I just really like being able to... Um, I just identify with it and I can pull... You know, for a lot of things I studied, I, I did a lot of study on, um, um, for uh, um, Drogo and for and for Conan, because they were kind of the same time. I did a lot of study on Geronimo and Cochise and like different warring chiefs and like there's many things that I, I drew from to find that power, but um, yeah. Thank you. Well, you got this room full of people here to see. Anything you want to say to them before we go? I love you except for those two other people. <laughs> like Deadpool, there was some asshole. I, the kid, I'll forgive, but I don't like the parents. Um, but everyone else, you're amazing! Go see him, that's good.